Final cut. Let's start a new game. We could have a thinker, a sensitive or physical pre-made character. I'm a sensitive guy. So I would have to select that one if we chose from this, but we're gonna create our own guy. <clears throat> and I already know what my stats are going to be. Uh, we're gonna be really agile. Our physic is absolutely shit. Our muscular physique and how strong we are is basically we are a we are a a spaghetti man. You know, do you guys know Captain America? We're like Captain America before he got the drugs. But we are pretty agile. We are pretty good on emotional intelligence. And we have decent average brain power. Captain Finland, yes. Let's go. And uh, then we have the. We can select one signature skill, and I have been thinking about this already. And um, always, whenever I can in a video game, if I can decide. If I can be a persuasive character, that's usually what I go for. I like to persuade, I like to like charm men, maybe sometimes women, play the puppet master. That sounds, I always, almost every time I choose that. So I'm gonna go with that again. That's gonna be our signature skill. The fairies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. There is nothing. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious for men sinny. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Ever. Never. Ever. Simply keep on non-existing, I prefer it that way. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. What was that about ex something? An awareness creeps up on you. Limbic system. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic source, it's bloated and shameful ball of meat surrounding you this is a terrible line of questioning and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing meat thing now tell me about the ex ex love ex tenderness it is foolish of you to resurface to the loss not after all the damage you've suffered to get here some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of a logic zone. Allons-y! Alright. Nothing town to fuck over. A return trip to the silence, please. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? Sing me the song of death. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. A sensation? It's called a boner. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain. An undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting. Longing. Dancing to disco music. Disco music. Let me fix one thing over here real quick. Here we go. You can take it. You're a champion. Volition. I am a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. 
What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? Alcoholics! A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Open your eyes. Hey, it's me! Oof. It's eight in the morning, four minutes past. We don't even have a idea how we look. There's some pants. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Fish them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. A bottle. Commodore Red. Empty cassette case. Alright. Looks like someone tore out at the tape while the song was playing. Oh! Someone didn't like the song. This real to real tape player is still on, rolling empty. It's a shoe. Left foot. Crap the coat. Esprit de corpse. What's in here? Words fail to describe how rank it smells in here. They should have sent a poet. You see bottles in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Fucked up shirt. Take it. That's the door? A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. I could wipe the mirror, but um, do I want to see what's in the mirror? Sure, why not? As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. So that would probably give me a penalty if I... <laughs> Maybe I should touch my face first, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. Oh, shit. What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Shit. Okay, I, I, yeah, I'm done. No, we, we don't want to know. We most definitely don't want to know more. Okay, so we have a door here, but it's locked. There's also this goddamn tie spinning, spinning on the fan over there. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and 
wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Okay, so I am aware that if we fail this throw, we will get a heart attack and the game will end. We will die. But I don't remember what happens here if you do these, these things. I'm gonna try and see what happens if I pull on the fan. We might still get a heart attack and it might be the game over, but let's see. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Okay, um, I'm not gonna do anything yet. I think we can save. Uh, uh, wait, hold on. Lucifer. Oh, shit. Your mum. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Ross. My mum, indeed. Let's get rid of these old saves. We only have one save and it's this one. Can I like... Uh, it's gonna emit save. Alright. Let's try this now. Two chain or has it been consigned there? 92% feel as though this creature is your friend. Success rate. Wants to reattach itself to your neck. So that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Just look how I'm gonna throw this this roll. Look. You swoop up and catch nice. the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. Okay. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie. With four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Dark. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Visual calculus. 72%. What do you mean? Fail! Assess the damage. How would you do that? What are you even trying to do? I don't know. Look out. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. All right. That's it. Okay, let's see if we can open the door with the key. Nice. What's this? The calendar says it's March. The year is 51. Minus 44? That's cold as fuck. Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. Damn. Officer? Am I a military personnel? Uh, no. Perplexed by your question? There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Then why did you call me an officer? Because you're a police officer. There you so. go. <laughs> you're shitting me. <laughs> you're shitting me. I'm not. Unless you've been shitting us all this time. All this time? You've been here for three days. On official police business. No less. And what business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Damn. Try the expression on her. Let her know you want her physically. 42%. Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? Who in their right mind would let me be an officer on law? I should get going. Oh, shit. Fuck it. <laughs> the words of no! left your mouth. Oh no! Oh no! The words have already left my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did he say? Come on. Say it again. Oh shit. I don't want to. 
Uh, okay, we're going to be confident. This is what I said. <laughs> no, you see, that's not what you said. You said... <laughs> I, I said what? Come on, man. Pretty, please. One more time. Oh. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cop are you? Cop of the apocalypse. Superstar cop. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a cop at all. I sure don't remember being in one. I think I might have lied. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. You're pretty. I'm sorry. I'm the sorry cap. Don't be. It was funny. And anyway, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit about any of it? Uh, you're cool. She appears to genuinely want you to understand it's okay. Yeah. So what if you can't pull grade A pussy anymore? There are other things in life. More meaningful, more fitting for a man your age. This. This is Fata Morgana. One thing, though. What's that? It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. Oh, shit. I never got to that point where we have to interrogate her. And for the record, no. I didn't do it. Shit. Well, that went well. <laughs> Looks like she left a nice long stub. It's still smoking. Well, that's cool. Is this door open? I cannot even touch it. Yeah. Okay. What's this? There's something on the table. Money! I don't know whose money that was, but Leoink! It's mine now. Equip a plastic bag, collect bottles, and sell them to Frit. Oh, I can collect bottles? Plastic bag? Damn. Where are we now? The smell of sea makes you dizzy. Wait. Is that my shoe? It is. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Fantastic. Like two baby crocodiles. These do not look like normal cop shoes. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. That's true. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Hmm. I do like my shoes, it seems. Well, that's nice. Low on health, put some points in the endurance. Oh yeah, we can sprint. Double clicking. The door is closed. Try the handle. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Knock. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. Oh. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Swallow the emotion. The door is closed. Knock again. There's someone in there. Still no answer. Maybe someone is... Okay, let's try much harder. Harder! Still nothing. One more time! Still nothing. Fuck you. This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper. Trompe le monde. Alright, downstairs we go. There's nothing else here to be seen. Equip a flashlight in a low light areas. All right.
Here we are. Summer door closed for the winter. This is where the lyrics would be. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing in it. Not me. The speaker is connected to the radio. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul's cubic content is obscured by the hangover. Of course. At this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. I don't think so. Through a PA system. No. By other people. No. What should I sing when it comes to it? I mean, maybe we can do it at some point, but you not now. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. Yeah, something happy. Why? No. No, no sad stuff. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. No, it's not. Sing the sad song. It's profound. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. True. Yo. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. A small engraved steel tag says, The Great Skua. Steer Coarius Skua. Skua. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Bitter? What happened to the bird? Look. Your buddy is over there. He looks at the door where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on That's not what I asked though! Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Something tells me you don't like me. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Of course! You're being sarcastic. Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? I did all those things? No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. What have I been doing then? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Hmm. Fuck off then. I'm trying to help here. I'm, I'm trying to, you know. Menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. What a cooler. The soft purr of an electric chooser comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. Chooser, huh? The door is bolted. Inside, you catch a glimpse of Unium para strike poster, some red something, okay? The sign reads Mess Hall reserves for Unium members. Doors open 1600. Where are you? Hello, sweetie. Hi! Cryptozoologist's wife. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to him. This royal pinball machine. Oh shit. Pinball. 
Yo. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hmm. So I can trust this man. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Shake, shake the hand. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. His script is firm. You realize he's waiting for your name. Shit. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Oh man, 58% chance to get a cool name, or we could be honest. Shit. <laughs> Alright, ma make a cool name, fuck it. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath you're two steps closer to it but there are still many to go what it is not yet time so all that was for nothing okay it is not yet time okay Okay then. Yeah. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? You mean him? If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? I have not. I will be honest with you, buddy. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Yes. Corona case? <gasps> Mongus. Hey, nuclear. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? No. So, the body is still in the tree. Yes. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Yeah, I noticed that too. Empathy. Thank you. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Okay. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I don't remember shit. I can see you drank last night. Yeah. Night before. Yeah. That you are still drunk now. Oh. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. Oh, 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 you understand. Good. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Um... Uh, what what were we supposed to do again? Talk to the manager. Then we go out back and take the body down. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. You're so calm. I like you. You're cool. After you, officer. All right. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Should I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? It wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Okay. Jesus Christ. We are not in a good spot, but this guy is calm and steady. 
His palms are not sweaty at all. Okay. I like you. Let's go talk to the manager again. He's kind of a dick, you know, but... Maybe you can help me. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place? Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41? <laughs> what is gold and orange like a forest fire but smells like clicker? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Kim is about to say something and let him. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Hmm. Sylvie. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finding a slip of paper, hands it to the lid. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. Yep. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. Yes? I have everything. You? Do I have questions? Let's find out. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me? Like a police officer would. <sighs> Where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. Mm-hmm. And how do we get there, then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. Yeah. A really big mm -hmm. one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. Mm -hmm. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Yeah, I saw it from the balcony where my shoe was. When I threw it through the window, yep. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. We do a little trolling, it's called we do a little trolling. Yep. Who killed him? Was I it you? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Maybe you killed him. He doesn't know. He just said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they? Before you said they... What do you mean by they? Oh, people are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. Hmm. Who exactly is saying that? The locals, the customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Why would the dock workers lynch this man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. I highly doubt that's the motive. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionists probably thought they'd send a message. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! What do you mean, of course? It's a simple question, just relax, just say no. I've got my eye on the you. The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. What do you mean, fine? This is not fu- I should 
rough him up. Extra fine. Jesus Christ. No more questions. Let's go. Gain experience 30. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Now you want the money? No one is saying the multi pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. What? Let's bail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility! You don't like those! <laughs> the necktie is talking to me now? Sleep oh, oh Jesus. What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me a hundred and thirty real. Are you mocking me? The IIR or Inter Isolari Real is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Yeah, you could have just said I owe money. Bitch. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right. Money. You owe uh, this system. This fucking guy. Real. Who does that clown think he is? Arrest him! I kind of agree with you, necktie, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. What do I owe this place for? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. But what exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Yes, I might be. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room or, or eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Proceed, but don't show him the coins, they're yours. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm gonna go for it. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. What happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Then what, officer? Maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Uh, I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry, I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. Okay. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I have no idea. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Quite likely far away. If it was close, I would be staying at home, I would assume. In time or space? Both. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. True. <laughs> could I trace the way back somehow? You could try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. 
Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. We'll figure out something, Enclopedia. We'll figure out something. Thought cabinet. Oh yeah, this thing. Can you show me your skills, please? Sure. Wasn't it here? Yeah, there you go. It's the same as last night before things crashed down and everything fucked up. Wait, we can level up? Do I have points? Uh... Wait. Where can I see my skill points? I think I have zero right now, right? Why was that like light up earlier? I think it was maybe just some weird thing. Those are your skill points, but how do I level up? You do not have enough skill points available. You need skill points to level up your skill points. Is that what you're saying, Nuclear? <laughs> Never mind. Alright, so... I guess we could go check out the body. These are skills. And you need skill points to upgrade them. It's quite likely that way. All right. Um, let's go talk to the lady here. Let's see if she knows anything. Hello again, sweetie. I see you've met up with your colleague. The lieutenant nods politely. Wait, who's sweetie? Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. I'm no sweetie, look at me. You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. Thanks, I appreciate it. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. Slap on the forehead? I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes clear over the rims of her, eye her glasses as she looks up smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. What do you mean? How'd you like to roll with me? I'm gonna beg for money. Okay, I'm gonna be... You seem like a nice person, Lena. But I don't know what the hell is going on. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. She won't judge you. No matter what you say. So it seems... I drank so hard, I forgot literally everything. Oh my. You know where we are, right? Rolling in rags, cafeteria. It was on my keys, but... That's right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? See, I have no idea. We're in the city of Repshol, dear. Mm-hmm, okay. Yes, and... Ravishol? I, 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 I don't know deadly squat about Ravishol, no. How would I even begin to tell you? Ravishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. Doesn't seem that pretty. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Ravishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies her expression. 
speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Yeah, that was the paper upstairs, it says 51, but... That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Oh, th pen! <laughs> Thank you! Her relief is palpable. Palpatine? Palpatine? She about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. No. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Uh... <sighs> Democracy, maybe? Nope. Sadly not. Revishol is what's called a zone of control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. If there's no government, how come there are cops? Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. Your portrait looks like something from Layers of Fear. True. That's why it's kind of scary to wipe the window, you know. Maybe there's a jump scare. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. Hmm. Oh, him? No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. I mean, we could just talk. Of course. Then, I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though, I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Hmm. That's a good point. This doesn't look like rich central. I hate to ask, but, um, sweetie needs money. Oh, sweetie, I heard your conversation with the manager about yeah. your uh, financial troubles. When do you get your next paycheck? I don't think I know. If she could, this woman would feed and clothe you and every other sad, lost person on this earth. What the fuck? Suggestion. Your deportment remains dignified as you shed a single man. <laughs> it isn't easy for me to ask this of anyone, but I, I am at the end of my rope. Any money you have could help me. Sweetie, I only have a few cents on me. Shit. I, I could give you this to pawn, just to tide you over. She unfastens a gold commodore pin from her left Gold pin. Wonderful. He has a pin. I mean, it might be worth millions, who knows? The pin is round and slightly tarnished. Three sailboats in bas relief with the sun hovering over the water behind them. A chipped green banner at the bottom reads, San Baptiste, Summer 31. Dinghy races. Dinghy races. You could totally sell this pin for cash. Yeah. I promise I'll buy it back once I have more money. Oh, it's not an ancient family heirloom or anything, but I suppose it would be nice to get it back. Well, that's nice. I gotta get going now. Thank you. You're a cool guy. I mean, person, Lena. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. Thank you. That didn't go that bad. We have a we have a pen. And we have a pin. Pork champ. Okay, so how did these things work again? I, I don't remember. So we can start to internalize things. Uh, temporary research bonus. Factual memory returns research time 6 hours. 
Okay, so we, we can figure out where we live if we start learning this. And it takes time to complete it, right? It's the only one I have right now. Let's just see. Okay, we are learning about home now. And it's gonna be going as we do time. As time goes on. There was some things that dear that I didn't realize like how they work last time, but um Let's see, okay. Um let's go check out the crime scene, I think. Some painkillers would be nice to get, but I think those cost some money. Alright. Da 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 I'm gonna go directly in. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Reconstruct the movement. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Can I even do anything useful here with my hangover on? Why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. That's true. This isn't case related, you think. This isn't case related, you think. Okay, not now. Leave. Oh, there it is. Oh, here we go. Oh shit. Kuno's got this. Kuno! A boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness. Like a gremlin. Gremlin? Oh yeah, Napa Kumpi, Kuno! Napa Kumpi, that's how you say it, not Napa Kumpi. Well, I guess it was pretty close. Napa Kumpi! Uh... Hey kid, a word police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. Love it in the dick. No, oh, at least it's censored. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Stop throwing rocks at my crime scene. Kuno, yeah, right in the mouth hole. Kick him, punch him, do something. They pay you no heed or pretend not to notice you. Hmm. Shits himself. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. What should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. Forces? You will see. Oh. Siblings? The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> He's calling us f***ers, Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. Wow. Uh, that's... Jesus Christ. Okay, I don't have time for this. Fuck you. Smells like spoiled meat and curled dairy. Human being decomposes. Shit. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. God. <laughs> Legendary endurance. Yeah, that's not gonna work out. God, why is it so bad? Active decay. 
It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. Oh. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! Just, just, just leave for now. We're fine. Triggery. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. What kind of boots? Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Yeah. Workers' boot tracks? Point? Noted. Noted. 42%. Get an exact count. Do it. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. All right. Leap. Oh, some money and magnesium. Pork champ. Someone is trying to grow herbs in the greenhouse. What kind of herbs are we talking about? Are we talking about the herbs? This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eaten night. What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Perception. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of the... Ah! That's why they're too orderly. It's clear! Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Bombship. Continue. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Let's 